One of my favorite masks is the Snow Algae and Spirulina Cooling Mask. Yes. Why is this formulated the way that it is and what's the cooling agent that is in this mask? Well, first of all, I want to say this is one of my favorite masks and it's probably the one that I see the most underutilized uh, of all the masks that we have. It really brings a lot of features and benefits for clients that have an inflamed skin. We're utilizing a menthol alternative cooling option here and it really does cool down the skin if you've had a little bit more of an aggressive treatment. Um, any kind of wind burn or sun exposure really helps to enhance the overall cooling effect. So we utilize it a lot uh, for removal of things like the firming peptide mask, but we found really good ways to work it into additional protocols where we're having uh, masking options or possibly some dermal planing where the skin might be a little bit sensitive and we just want to feel that client have their skin cooled down ever so slightly. When you look at the ingredient profile of the mask, uh, the snow algae has an incredible story. Snow algae actually grows on very high alpine peaks on top of the snow. And because of the conditions of where it grows, it's considered to be an extremophile, which means it grows in an extreme environment. And the algae itself grows pink on the surface of the snow. And because it's so cold in the extreme environment, it's not able to produce chlorophyll. So there's no green, it creates this really, really nice pink shiny hue to it. And what that does is it creates a very unique profile of antioxidant. There's some great um, ingredient profile metabolites that are found in the snow algae that help to not just uh, cool the skin, but also to help to reduce overall inflammation. So it really, really adds to the benefits and the appeal of the mask. Spirulina, of course, is recognized as a superfood, but again, we see a very unique profile of uh, antioxidants when it comes to the spirulina. So the two of those together really, really make for a nice anti-inflammatory mask, but also it's in a gel base it's a water-based gel, so it just adds to the overall cooling appeal with, again, the additional non-menthol alternative. So really skin nutrient type of mask. It is a skin nutrient rich mask, but the fact that it helps to cool the skin once it's warm really adds to the overall appeal and, and the versatility of the product. Who would be the ideal candidate for this mask? So anybody who's had any kind of inflammation or, or, or prolonged exposure to the sun is the ideal client. But again, because of the uniqueness of the antioxidant profile, it's just really geared towards overall skin health. So you can't go wrong with this. There's no contraindication for who should and who should not re uh, receive the mask. The only thing you have to be wary of is that if you have any open areas to the skin, it may create a little bit of a sense of tingle. But for the most part, this is appropriate for all skin types, all skins. And what would be the best mixology option to use with the snow algae mask? We found that most of our clients are utilizing the mix of the snow algae uh, mask along with the lipid replacing cleansing gel to get a little bit of this foaming property and that's utilized to remove the firming peptide mask. And that's something that we see all the time. It really makes the removal a snap because the hardness, the shell that you see from the firming peptide can make it a little bit challenging to remove. So just by getting a nice lather together with the snow algae mask and the lipid replacing cleansing gel really helps with the overall removal process. And would you use steam over top of this? And how long would the mask usually be applied on the skin? Most of our products, you are, you can use steam. This is not one that I would say uh, requires steam. You can just apply this. The thickness of the base um, allows it to stay hydrated so it doesn't dry very quickly. Um, but if you wanna have steam on this, you certainly can. Most of the time, the clients that would be receiving this mask, we're not gonna use steam. So again, any kind of prolonged sun exposure, any kind of heat exposure, this is gonna to help to reduce some of that. So steam might not always be appropriate. And ice globes or ice rollers might be a good option. Ice globes are absolutely fantastic option for doing this protocol. And again, just adding to the overall coolness. If you've got the ice globes in the freezer or in the fridge, it's just gonna add another layer of coolness and cooling sensation for the client. And last question before we get to application, do you have any pro tips with this mask? Absolutely, and again, this is one of, I think probably one of the more underutilized masks as I mentioned. Um, this doesn't actually have to be removed. The consistency of a lot of masks that we have at Circadia, you know, they're designed to be applied, we let them sit for the allocated amount of time, and then it's designed to be removed from the surface of the skin. Here, we can actually apply this, leave it on, and then apply a moisturizer directly over the top. And again, that's because of the base that we're using as part of the product. 
And will it mix well with, with a moisturizer if you wanted to mix them together, or do you have to layer them? It really does, and again, this is a water-based product, so if you're utilizing a serum over the top and then applying the moisturizer, again, that just adds to the overall benefit. And whether it's the vitamin C, the Myocyte Plus, again, this is something that's used a lot in our mixology protocols, so you really can't go wrong. Now, as with most of our masks, we start with our application at the top of the forehead. And again, I just bring it down the temple. One of the things to be conscious of is to not add too much product. I mean, certainly you wanna make sure that you've got a nice, even spreadable layer of whatever it is that you're applying. This product has a nice viscosity, so it's not like you have to worry about it running. So if you wanna go back uh, and detail the areas, whether you have to get underneath the eye or any areas that might you know, have any folds in the skin, um, you can certainly do that. You don't have to worry about going back over the product uh, and, and increasing the, the layers that you're applying. Because it has the menthol alternative, how close do you get inside the orbital eye bone? Uh, again, it, it, when you work with menthol, menthol has a tendency to kind of travel. So when you're putting it again underneath the eye, you can feel it, you can smell it. We don't experience that nearly as much with the, the ingredient that we're using. So you can get pretty close to the eye underneath, but of course, as always, make sure that you're avoiding the eye. Um, we're not using eye coverings today, but certainly I strongly recommend if you're just getting used to using the product, that that's something that you can use. So this could be a really good enhancement eye treatment if you can get right in under the eye, maybe with the emergency eye lift. Absolutely, and again, if you've got um, any cooling sensation that you would require, you can certainly go right underneath the eye. And would you massage over top or is this something that really just kind of sits on the skin? So um, when it comes to the consistency of the product, if you really start to massage it in, you'll notice it starts to penetrate. So again, if we're just leaving it sit as part of the advanced mixology, you can do that and then remove the product. But if you're adding the moisturizer, if it's the last step as part of a finishing protocol, then certainly you can put the product directly over top and then you would massage it in. But again, you'll notice that as you start to massage, it will penetrate into the skin. And this mask application can go all the way neck, decollete as well? Absolutely, neck and decollete is great. Again, in really any areas that you've got uh, sun exposure, this is gonna work well. So it could be great for a back treatment? Absolutely, I love this as a back treatment. In fact, when we were first developing this product, we were looking at you know adding it to some of our acne protocols and we were finding that a lot of the acne clients because when you see the back knee, typically it's grade two, grade three acne, larger inflammatory lesions. So the cooling sensation just really, really helps because they're inflamed. You know, a lot of those lesions, those acne blemishes, they're hot uh, to the touch. So being able to have something that's gonna help to shrink down some of that uh, heat and enhance the cooling only adds to the overall appeal. This wouldn't be too stimulating for rosacea or sensitive skin. You know, it's really great for rosacea sensitive skin. Um, but again, if you're looking at different grades of rosacea, I mean, there's a number of different subtypes. There's four different subtypes of rosacea. Subtype three would probably be the top end that you see, but within subtype two, you have a pretty broad range of diffused redness uh, and what we, we call papules and pustulars. In fact, subtype two is called papular pustular rosacea. So um, you just have to be wary of how extreme that subtype too. If it's at the very top end, they may experience some discomfort, but even water can be discomforting for uh, clients that are experiencing that level of severity of rosacea. And when it comes to the removal for this one, again, this is a very easy on, easy off, and even if there's a little bit of residual product left over, that is not an issue. In fact, it's only gonna to help to add to the overall benefits. Are these towels available at Circadia? These towels are available at Circadia. Um, they're great. I love working with these towels. Very, very nice, soft microfiber. And again, if you're gonna be doing some heavy exfoliation at any point in the protocol, you wanna make sure that whatever you're using is nice and soft, and, and these certainly fit the bill. And they hold heat very well. They do, they hold heat and they hold coolness. If you wanna go with something that's a little bit cooler, again, if we're using the snow algae mask and the, it's appropriate for the client to have a cool towel rather than a warm towel, this is a great option. So there's real no 
contraindications with this mask. It's very, very universal. The only contraindication again is, is broken skin. So if you've got broken skin, and that's in general for pretty much all product applications and certainly Circadia masks, um, especially those that have higher lead blood activity. If it's, the skin's broken, you want to either avoid that area or wait till whatever's going on with the skin has been resolved. Mm -hmm.